My name is Dr. Shabuddin Rahim Tula. I am a distinguished professor at the University of Southern California and Griffith Professor of Cardiology at the Keck School of Medicine and also at the LAC USC Medical Center. The, uh, my presentation is going to be of what I have just given the lecture at the International Academy of Cardiology annual scientific sessions. And the title of that has been the treatment of obstructive thromboprosthetic heart valve. We did a systematic review of all papers in the literature from 1996 to 2012. And from that review, we had to exclude a, a large number of studies. But we came up with about 70, 756 patients who had thrombolytic therapy and 13 studies comprising 662 patients who had surgical therapy. In brief, uh, the, uh, in brief, over 98% of the patients had a mechanical valve. So with the biological valve, it's much less common. Uh, all but three patients had a mechanical valve. In the question is, what, what, what do you find at this site? And what we find on an average is that approximately 40% of the patients have a thrombus. 40% have both thrombus and panis, and a small percentage, about 20%, have only a thrombus or only a panis. The second issue that comes up is, and in practice is, what is the anticoagulation status at the time of presentation? And it turns out that anticoagulation status being adequate was described in 61% of the patients. But the data should be interpreted with caution because the patient at the time of hospital admission and when they came in with an obstructed valve may have adequate anticoagulation, but it may have been totally inadequate six months earlier and the patient started a thrombotic process, which gets it. Uh, the data in the literature splits up between those with the tricuspid thromboprosthetic heart valve and left heart. In thrombos, right-sided prosthetic heart valve, the success rate in thrombolytic therapy is 95, 96%, sorry, is 88%. So obviously thrombolytic therapy is first choice. If they fail, then they can have surgery. Of the patients that he had who had, uh, uh, who had a thrombolytic therapy, over 756 patients, uh, most uh, were women, 60%. Uh, approximately 65% had, in fact, a mitral valve that was involved. And about, oddly enough, about 40% of the patients were in functional class one and two. Then when looking at the efficacy of thrombolytic therapy, first and foremost, there is a mortality there is a recurrence rate approximately 12 to 15 percent of each. So if there is a bleed, if there is a cerebral episode, it may be due to either to the bleeding from the anticoagulation or from an embolus. And of course that will account for the mortality. The mortality with thrombolytic therapy was 8 percent. And it's 8 percent in those who have complete success, complete success being defined as resolution of the thrombus and resolution completely of the gradient across the valve. 30% of the patients had in failure of thrombolytic therapy of which one third in fact had minimal or some degree of success but incomplete success. And of those, most will wind up with surgery but there are a certain number of patients who, in whom the outcome is not described. In, 30, in 60 percent of those 30 percent, uh, in fact, there was no beneficial effect of thrombolytic therapy at all. And that group is important because if you start thrombolytic therapy, it's not successful, they go to surgery, that waiting for surgery resulted in death in 15 patients. So you really have to move and do things successfully. Again, the success rate once you have that is the mortality of those in the failure group. If you include the failure group and say that 50% had died, then the mortality goes up to about 
If you look at those who had surgery, again, uh, the majority were women. Two-thirds to three-fourths of the valves were mitral valves. The success rate is, uh, almost, is 100 percent because the surgeon takes out all the valve, all the thrombus, and then puts a new one. But the recurrence rate is about 8 percent. CVA and emboli is 8 percent. And the mortality of surgery is 15 percent. But keep in mind that 81 percent of the patients uh, in, who went to surgery uh, following thrombolytic therapy, in fact, had uh, a, uh, an issue with regard to what their mortality is higher. Surgical mortality is 15 percent, but they had an 85 percent incidence of functional class 3 and 4. And so in brief then, uh, I think we can say that the right-sided thrombos prosthetic heart valve, the first-line therapy is thrombolytic therapy. It's going to be successful in most. And then if you look at the left side of the valve, the mitral and the aortics are combined in the literature. The thing that stands out is about 60% are women. 60% to 70% have it in the mitral position. That there is a mortality which ranges from 8% to 28%. That in those who have failure, surgery may be needed urgently. Thirdly, to keep in mind that if you start thrombolytic therapy and they then have to go to surgery, it's double jeopardy. <laughs> then with surgery, yes, the success rate is there, uh, and you have about a 6% recurrence rate, 6% embolism rate, and, uh, and you have, you know, with that, a certain number of successes with the surgical therapy.